Alright, hey, you're here with Imagine Garage, and we have a new project, an E46 330i. And as you know, these things are becoming super popular in the drift community. But what is not super popular with these things are how the rear subframes want to tear out. So this one uh, doesn't look too bad. There's some wrinkles in it right there. I'll get some light on it in a second. But what we're going to do today is actually make the plates for them. So. We have some plating up here that we're going to be using. Oh, it's kind of a mess. We're also modding some control arms and doing some other stuff. But we're going to be using an eighth inch plate and making the actual cutouts available so that you can just install them. You can also buy them from other companies like uh, I believe Condor and Garageistics has them. So I'll show you under here what, we're, what we have to remove. So you have to pull this bolt here, the bolt up top. Then you have to remove these guys. Hey, I don't like spiders, so sorry about that. You have to remove those three bolts up there on the front trailing arm. Same thing on that side, trailing arm, the real bolt back here. Then you get to pull the subframe bolts, which are right here. So this bolt gets to come out along with the front bolt as well. And the same thing on that side, that big bolt and this bolt. As you get ready to do all that, the first step, however, is you want to make sure that you pull the drive shaft out first and remove the exhaust out of your way because all this is going to hit this entire rear subframe back here is coming out. So I'll pull that out and then I'll kind of show you what we're actually plating up there. Uh, it looks like a lot of spiders, which I'm not a fan of. But the basically what the plate is going to be doing is the plate is going to be reinforcing this area. So if you notice right here, it's already cracking right there and it's cracking on the inside, which I don't know if you can see with this light. But once I get it apart, I'll show you guys what we're doing, how we're plating it, and yep, then we can kind of go from there. So give me a second to tear all this apart and we'll be back shortly. Okay, so we got the subframe and the entire rear end out of the vehicle. I pull it out as one piece, it makes it easier for me. Make sure when you're doing it though, that you get these, which are the e-brake cables, make sure you get them all the way out like this. We kind of damaged this one a little bit. There's like a crease in it. It'll be fine, but just make sure you pull them all the way out as uh, you know before you get it down. And we'll dive underneath and I'll kind of show you what it is. So these are the bushings. We're actually going to be replacing the bushings at the same time. Not that these are bad. These ones are actually really good, which is quite surprising based on how the side and the paint and everything else on the car has been kind of let to go. But these ones seem to be preserved and seem to look okay. So let's dive underneath and I'll show you what it looks like all apart. So the main concern ones are the main carrier, which are right here. These guys. Let's see if I can get it so you can see it's not too bright. There we go. And this one over here. So most of the time you'll see them and they'll be all destroyed and cracked. They'll be cracked all around here all around the front side of this and be pretty bad. So this one we're going to build a plate that comes out all the way around to this, back over and back in on both sides, same thing. And then in the rears, these are the rears that we look for. So see how this rear is? This one's nice and clean too. I thought this was cracked, but it was actually just some mud and some buildup. So we're looking good here. And we're going to build a plate that comes this way, this way, all the way out, ties into these dimples. So these are actually where it was factory like tack welded from the from the company from BMW. Come all the way around back here and we're even going to plate up the side of this for a little bit more rigidity on both sides. So there's that one and then uh, this one. Also when you're doing this uh, after we do or after I make the plates I'll show you guys what the plates look like. Please be careful welding this. There's a lot of fuel here and of course you're welding right up against a fuel tank on this side and you're welding right up against a fuel tank on that side. So make sure that, oh, oops, there we go, on this side. So make sure you have no fuel leaks. I'll show you what we do to try and prevent uh, any kind of damage going on that way or fire or explosion because that can be very dangerous. So uh, first goal is remove these and then we will build the templates and then make the plates. Okay, so here's the plates that we had made. If you notice, instead of just being normal flat plates, we actually drilled holes in them. And the holes are to, to match up with where the actual uh, like tack welds are on the body or on the chassis. So we made an eighth inch plate like I was talking about earlier. And we just made them all kind of fit. So I'll show you what they look like up under the chassis. And then make sure too, as you do it, that you prep the chassis quite well. So 
make sure you get them all nice and clean. It's kind of hard to see with the light, but but uh, there we go. You can kind of see up there. Anyways, just clean them all off the best you can. Make sure it's nice and silver and clean. And then how the plates fit, they go like this. They fit like that. They go right there. And see the two holes align with the two holes. Don't know if you're going to be able to see them from the shadow, but there's a hole here and there's a hole there. And that's the, that's where they actually are set up to go with. So that it kind of holds everything together and pulls the upper layer that's inside down along with it. So we're going to weld it all the way around, 360, plus the welds in there. Weld through the center, hold it flat, and then uh, put the suffering back up. So that's how the four corners look. You can see them. They're kind of a little dark. I apologize for lighting once again, but that's what we got going on. So give me a second. We'll weld these in, and then I'll show you what they look like after they're all welded back together. Okay. So we've welded one plate in. There we go. Try and get it around. And see, we welded straight through the two holes to tack it to the body first. Made sure it was aligned, and then welded all the way around the rest of it. There we go. All the way around the sides. Then how I center them is like this. So I put the I put the stud in the middle and then make sure it's centered. Make sure it looks good all the way around. So that when you weld it in, you can get this out and back in no problem by hand. Also, if you notice, this is how we protect the gas tank. We soak this thing with water and then we just cram a rag all the way around. We're going to put another rag right there and cram it all the way around and tuck it in so that it's nice soaked and wet. And then on top of that, I have my handy dandy little spray bottle just in case something goes wrong. So that's how we do it. We run it right around the, the whole bridge of it and just weld all the way 360 degrees. And we're gonna do the same for the ones in the rear and the ones back there. The other fun part is trying to find a ground. This seems to be the best ground I've found so far is I take the bolt, Thread it in until it kind of binds up, and then I put the ground right there on that. So, also we're going to show you about draining the diff, and we're going to weld the diff at the same time. We're also going to be putting in some bushings in. So I will show you that in a second after I'm done welding this. All right, so as it continues to pour rain outside, we're in the, in the shop where it's nice and warm. And as you can see now, we have installed the, there we go, we have installed the plates finish welding the plates on and we have now painted them make sure you paint them primer paint get them covered because uh, this is a rust zone for sure so painted them and then we installed the studs back in them in the front so the front two are the studs and the rear two are the hollow holes that will get re that will get reinstalled after we are done and we get the subframe all the way up so we're, there's some water dripping down right now actually so We'll get the subframe up and then I'll show you shots of how to install a subframe easy. And there we go. That's all four of them. Looking what good. What we do now is we're going to show you guys how to replace these. How to pull these things out. I know a lot of people fight with them and they take a lot of time. So we've already done one just to make sure that it works before we spend time to film it to show you guys it not working. And that's how they look once they're done. And that's how they look once they are out. So what we do first is we heat the outside just around the, the back side of it where you can get it easy or easy access to I guess and what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to see it bubble up once you see it bubble up then you can start to knock the middle of it out you can also if you don't have fire or a torch or anything to do it we use a map gas blowtorch you can also use a drill and drill holes straight down through it to knock the center out but the key is to knock the center out first Sometimes you can get them hot enough that the whole thing will release, but most of the time you just have to drill it out or knock it out somehow. So let's see, it's... All right, so now as you can see, or hopefully you guys can see it, it's starting to actually bubble up. So that's a good start. That's how you know then you can start to move it over and start going to the other side. And once it bubbles up all the way around, you're going to get some smoke, but nothing crazy. If it's on fire, uh, you're probably doing it wrong. So see the little, small little bubbles right there? That's what you're looking for. So he's going to do the whole thing, and then uh, we're just going to hammer right out through the middle of it. All right, so now that we've got the center out of it, looks like that, 
We're gonna start and grab the sawzall. Well, she's got the sawzall right here. And we're gonna start cutting it, but we're gonna cut it towards this way because if we damage it, it's easier to fix this than if we cut out the outside. So he's gonna start cutting it, and once it grabs the bit, you know that it's actually collapsed the, the bushing in that spot. And we're gonna cut in two spots, so go for it. Notice how it grabbed it? Right there when it grabs it, you know it's cut all the way through and it's actually squeezed it against the end of the blade. So then we're going to move it over to another spot about an inch away from itself and then cut again. There we go. So grab it again. Pull that out. Now he's going to take the go back to the mallet, the mini Thor hammer, and it should knock the whole entire thing back out through the middle. So there we go. There's the center piece that he knocked out, and it comes out easy like that. So if you do it right, it should come out that simple. If not, you might fight it for a while. Just make sure you don't cut through this. So once the blade grabs, just stop there. And yep. Yeah, so there's that, he's gonna go over, we're gonna do these two ones right now as well, and then I'll show you how we do the plates. Okay, so this is the second part of the bushing and uh, I guess E46 rear end. So these are the bushings we pushed in. Normally we use Garagistics because they seem to fit really, really well. This is another brand, I'm not too sure of it, but the problem we ran into is in the front, they were not shaved down in the middle. So the actual, this little guy, wouldn't have sat flat on it once we plated it. So what we had to do is we actually had to mill this out and then cut the middle of it down because it originally sat like this. And the problem is, if you look, if it sits like this and the plate's on top, now you're just sitting on this little stub. But now we've milled it down and cut it out so it sits all the way flat. So now the actual bushing that was designed to sit flat up against the body is gonna sit flat. So if you run into that problem, you can just mill it down, drill out the inside, whatever you wanna do, or just get the right ones to start with. But this is what we had, so this is what we're gonna use. And then, now we're going over to here. So, we took the diff apart and we drained the diff into there. Make sure you drain the diff very, very well. Then we took brake clean and cleaned all of this out very, very, very well. So you clean all this out, and what we're gonna do at this point is we are going to plate it. Which I have the plate right here. It's nothing special. Uh, I think it's uh, 3 eighths of an inch, so a little bit over eighth inch. And this guy is going to go right in here, boom, like, like so. And once we get it uh, set up and aligned, like that, that's where the plate is going to get welded in. It's just like this. But what we're going to do first, to make it a little bit stronger, is we're going to actually weld in here on both seams so that what will happen is that the gears are actually locked in place to start with. Then we'll insert the plate and weld around the plate and go from there. So E46 diff, welding it, then we're gonna put it back in there too. So hold on a second and we'll show you what it looks like on the other side. All right, so that's what the finished product should look like if you've uh, kind of welded it correctly. So it's solid all the way across here, solid all the way across here, and then solid here and solid here. And it looks like a little hole, okay, there we go. So it is solid there and solid in here. So basically we just plated it on top of it. Now I have seen people where they weld here and they weld around here and around here and around here. I think that might be overkill for this. The car is not gonna make more than about five, 600 horsepower. So there's really no point in going that extreme on it. But yeah, so this is what we do. Now the next part is, is uh, you take your handy dandy magnet and get to go fishing for a while to make sure you get all the slag and all the stuff out of it. Also something that I forgot to share with you just cause we did it automatically is, uh, do you have the torch? Is uh, what we ended up doing or using was this little guy. And after you brake clean it, hit it, let it burn out, get all the junk out of it that you don't need. And then you can also preheat the, ge the gears, mattering if uh, your welder's hot enough to do it or not. And if you preheat it, it'll actually allow the metal to, to soak in and go deeper into it. So preheat it, it will help out with the welding and try and use as, as uh, clean surface as possible. Please do not use uh, flux core in here. You have a nightmare trying to get it all out. So just MIG it. There we go, that's what it looks like. And cool, we're gonna put it back together here, let it cool down, 
fill it full of uh, some Kendall oil and slam it back in the rear end and then the rear end is going to go back up in the car. All right, so now we are resealing the diff. Pretty much you put some of this stuff on it, some Ultra Gray by Permatex. And uh, he's kind of drying it out, making sure the diff's okay down there. And we're going to be rubbing this around, smoothing it out, and then it'll go back on to factory torque specs. All right, so we have the subframe back in. Everything's all back down, torqued. And we recommend that you paint mark everything as well so you can tell if nuts or bolts have spun or moved on you. Like, so you can see on this one, paint mark. It helps it for later on. Just so you can glance down here, make sure everything's torqued and tightened, and then you're all set. So that's what it looks like all back in, guys. Hopefully you had a, uh, a wonderful time, you enjoyed it. That's what the plates look like, all welded in. You can see that plate there, this plate up in there. And yeah, now we should be good to go and nothing should break off. So cool, enjoy, and we'll catch you guys next time.